Thank you very much, Mr. Um, Pidozier. I'm trying to put on my okay. video. Okay, yes, my video is on. And it's good that everybody can see who is talking. Good evening, everyone. I welcome each and every one of us to this um, talk, short talk this evening. And uh, Mr. Adebite, you are welcome. Thank you for joining us from the UK. God bless you. I hope you are fine together with the family. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. You are welcome. Yeah. Then, uh, Ms. Kelechi Itejofo, you are welcome. Uh, Ms. Ido Kazija Damilola, you are welcome. Ms. Ekele Elewinchi, you are welcome. And uh, Pastor Jeffrey, you are welcome. Also, Brother Chigozie, you are welcome, the organizer. So, by the grace of God, as you know, you helped. I'm Dr. Omozusi Messi. And then, uh, Brother Chigozie, please, can you share the slide? Hello? Can you help me to share the slide? Yes, I'm, I'm doing that right away. I'm trying okay. to get it on, and we're going to get that right on. I'll be talking about uh, maintaining godly relationship in a decayed world. Maintaining godly relationship in a decayed world. We have our Bible test that we'll be using. We have John 13, 34 to 35. Luke 6, 31. If you have a writing card, please, you can write them. We'll come back to the Bible verses later. We have Malachi chapter 2, verse 14 to 15. We have Hebrew chapter 13, verse 4. But before we go into our Bible verses, we want to look at, we want to define some terms. What do we understand about godly relationship and also educate one? When we say godly relationship, what do we mean? We have two definitions that we are using this evening. The first one says recognizing God's presence in the relationship. And doing that which pleases him. Recognizing God's presence in the relationship and doing that which pleases him. That is the first definition. Whatever relationship you are in, we know nowadays we have so many relationships. It can be in form of a business relationship, it can be in form of friendship, and it can also be in form of marriage. So, whatever relationship you find yourself in, Acknowledging the presence of God, acknowledging God in that relationship, it makes it a form of godly relationship. So, also let's look at the definition when we say a decayed world. Before we go to a decayed world, some scholars also define godly relationship as recognizing the call of God in the life of your friend, business partner, or your spouse, and assisting one another. To fulfill the call of God in each other's life. That was the second definition by some other scholars. That godly relationship means recognizing God's call in each other's life and do what you can to support and nurture the purpose of God in each other's life. That's a kind of selfless word, uh, love, showing selfless love. Not love that is self-centered, not love that is greedy or that is deceitful. So that's the second definition for godly relationship. So let's go to what, what do we mean by a decayed world? Looking at the world we are in today, a lot of things are happening. You know, what we used to forbid in time past is now being accepted in the society. For example, we have immorality in the talk of the day. Before, when people want to, when they want to commit immoral, fornication or adultery, they do it in the secret. But nowadays, in the open, you see people doing it without shame. You know, you know, they don't have any shame or whatever. Also, this is a lot of this is here and there among our young ones. We have the call, you are what we call Yahoo, you are what we call Yahoo Plus. You know. Also, we have. Faithlessness. People are no longer faithful to one another, even married couples, spouses. They are unfaithful to each other, cheating on one another. 
Then also we have what we call LGBTQ. You know, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and then queer. To a child. What do you do? Don't tell the child, oh, you are a male, you are a female, just because of the type of sex organ that the child has. Allow the child to grow up, even if you get back to a female. The child can grow up and say, ah, no, I don't, I no longer want to identify as a female gender. So now I want to be a male. You can imagine that. Those are the signs of the last days. You know, say iniquity shall abound, and the love of many will work school. You see what people are identifying with. And if you look at the book of Romans, chapter 26, uh, chapter 1, sorry, there's 26 to 28. I don't know if somebody has a Bible there. Romans chapter 1, verses 26 to 28. Please, if you have a Bible, you can read for us. If I see it first, I will read from here. Romans chapter 1, we have to look at, there was a prophecy about gay, lesbian, and all those things in the Bible, years back, even before they started practicing. Hello. 26. Yes. Hello, doctor. I don't know if my screen is showing now. Well, it was showing at first, but it has disappeared. What's up now? Yes, it's on, but it's not so wide. What is happening? Can you minimize us, our screen? Those of okay, us are showing on the screen. Eh? Okay, okay, I'll do so. No, it's okay now. Oh, it was okay before. Are you sharing from uh, your answers? Actually, it's from the answer, Yes, I'm sharing from my answer. I'm actually in the remote area now. Uh, Pastor oh. Shipley, share this slide with me. Let me okay. let me share it with my laptop. Hold on, let me try and share. I think I can share. Oh, but it's not showing. It's not showing my desktop. It's showing channel, phone tab, window, and the entire screen. Please share for us. It's okay this way. We can manage it this way. Hello, Mr. Chibos. It's okay this way. Okay. Let me share the slide with everybody that is present. All right, so let's continue, please. Sorry for All right, so. All right. I'll be yes, testing recording. We record all the things. We need to call you oh. up. Yeah, yeah. Share it to skip one. Like well, if you want to go to your house, just come. I'll go to your house. All right, so let's go to the chapter one, verse 23. Someone uh background is making noise. May I bring you to the mute your your answer, please? Ah, it has disappeared after you muted. Okay, it's okay now. So from verse 26, it says, for this course, verse 25, please. It says, Romans chapter 1, who turned the truth of God into a lie? And worship and serve the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. He says, For this cause, verse 26, God gave them up unto veil affection. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the women, born in their lust one towards another. You can imagine that's they, homosexual. Men leaving the use of women and born in their lust, a fellow man lusting after another man. You know, the Bible has mentioned it years back, even before. In fact, it has even occurred in the Old Testament, in Sodom and Gomorrah. That was what they were doing. And that was why God did what? Destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Because men were sleeping with men, women with women. Pain and lesbianism were on the increase. And that is what is happening nowadays. In most countries, it has been legalized. And not only that, let's go back to our, our slide. And not only that, we have what we call bestialism. You see a man getting married to an animal. In fact, you can see that on the slide here. Though it's small, we can't enlarge it because he's sharing with his answer. You can see a man being married to a dog. And he's a priest that is even performing the wedding. You can imagine that. So, if we have more time, let's go through that Romans chapter 1, 26 to 28. 
It says, because they denied God, God did what? Gave them also a reprobate mind. So that they are now turning the natural thing used into the unnatural. So also we can see killings every day. These are the signs of a decayed world. So as Christians, both single and married, how do we maintain a godly relationship in a world that is polluted and decayed? You know, there was a place in the Bible, Elijah, when Jezebel was, you know, chasing Elijah to kill him, to kill him. Because Elijah prophesied that for three years there would be no rain and there was famine in the land. You know, and Elijah cried to God and said, God, ah, no, I'm the only one, everybody, they've gone after that. I'm the only one that is remaining. Lord, uh, in fact, I don't feel like living again. I just take my life. And God told him, it's not true. You are not the only one that is serving me. God told him that he has 70,000 that have not bowed their knee to bow. You can imagine that. 70,000 people. And Elijah was surprised. And ah, where are those people? Are you getting me? So also in this corrupted and polluted generation, there are people that are living righteous and holy life. There are people that are, you know, obeying the word of God. There are people that are living in righteousness according to the doctrine of Christ. He says, so how do we maintain a godly relationship? So in our marriage, let's go back to our verses, our Bible text now. If we look at John chapter 13, Verse 34 to 25. I will read from here because of our time. But you can open it up there and follow me as I read. In John 13, 34 to 35, it says, The new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, and that you also love one another. Verse 35. It says, By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if you have love one to another. So, how do we... Um, relate in a godly way by showing one another love. If you love your friend, if you love your business partner, if you love your spouse, you will not do anything, you know, evil against your friend, against your business partner, or against your spouse. You will do that that will please that person. You will do what that person delights in and not, not what will grieve the person. You will not lie against the person. You will not cheat on the person. You will not dupe the person. So, that is what John 13, verses 34 to 35 says. So, let's look at the other Bible verse. Before then, the best relationship are those filled with Christian love. Some people call Christian love agape love. Agape love. The God type of love. We have different types of love. But the most important one that we should express as Christians is the God type of love, the agape love, the Christian love. So let's look at the next Bible text that we are using. Luke chapter 6 verse 31. It says, And have few who that men should do to you, do you also to them likewise. Whatever you want people to do to you, you don't want somebody to lie to you, so don't lie to anybody. You don't want the person, people to deceive you, so don't deceive others. You don't want someone to steal from you, so don't steal from others. You don't want somebody to cheat you, so don't cheat others. So that is what that Bible verse is saying. Luke chapter 6, verse 31. Whatever you want someone to do to you, do also to that person. There's also a Bible passage that says that whatsoever thing you sow, you reap. If you are a cheater, you will be cheated by others. You know? If you are unfaithful to your spouse or to your friend, you know, also, you will get into a relationship that you, you, you are someone will express unfaithfulness to you. So, Malachi chapter 2, verse 14 says, Yet he said, Wherefore, because the Lord has been witness before thee, between thee and the wife of thy youth, against whom thou hast dead treacherously, yet is she thy companion and the wife of I come then for those of us that are married here. You know, some people they are unfaithful, treacherous, deceitful to their spouse. They pretend to be what they are not, even those that are engaged, you know, to be married. We are talking about relationship. There might be some here that are engaged. You are not showing your true color. 
you are all tempered. You know, you are not a truthful person. And you are pretending. You know that there are so many secrets about your life. You are not disclosing it to your husband to be or your wife to be. You know? By the time you get into that marriage, you see things unfolding. And that can lead to problems. That can break up that marriage. It is good for you to be sincere. And if the relationship cannot continue, it's broken on that for you to go into that marriage and then before you know it, because of one secret or the other that you knew when you were engaged to that person, the marriage is not. There's a saying that broken engagement is better than a broken marriage. Then let's look at the book of Hebrews 13.4. It says, marriage is honorable in home and the bed on the fire. But war and murder, some Bible verses use fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed on the fire. For those that are engaged, some people will say, ah, we are going to get married, so let's test each other now. Especially brother, sorry to say, how do you know she will get pregnant? If I don't test her, she must be pregnant before I pay her diary. Because so many people in the family, they have their bad experiences. Yours cannot be like others. If only you can trust on God. That means you are working carnally. If you allow God to lead you, to direct you, you are not choosing carnally. You know, God will not allow you to, uh, to make mistakes. But because nowadays people are no longer spiritual, they just want to choose, oh, this person is beautiful, she's wealthy, the other man is the man is handsome. It's very rich, you know, from a rich background. I don't want to suffer. It is good, yes. It's not good to suffer. But that should not be the primary criteria. It should be somebody that is God-fearing and also seek the face of God and has God, you know, allow God to direct you. So Hebrews 13.4, I'm emphasizing on this. It applies to both the single, the engaged, and the married. It says marriage is honorable in all and the bed on the fire. Nowadays, you see a lot of uh, spinsters and bachelors messing up themselves before marriage, testing one another. And unfortunately, most of them don't need to marry. You know, there was a diagram on WhatsApp that went viral recently. They showed a, a, a human being with the heart. And inside the heart of the person, you know, they opened up the heart of the person. They showed you can, if you can't, you can see up to 50 persons inside that person. And what was the writing underneath that diagram? That particular human being has slept with about 50 persons. That means the person has shared his soul or her soul. Anybody you sleep with that is not your spouse, you have given away part of you to that person. And you have taken a part of that person into you. So that was what that diagram was all about. So it says marriage is honorable and the dead on the fire. We see so many, there was one the uh, last two weeks, I think, I think they even said it on the news and it went viral online on social media about a woman that was married. Two of those children that through Jesus is going to have countless number of children. That was what God did. And Jesus came, the Bible says it that and you know sin he was made sin for us. So it is only God in any relationship we find ourselves in to be able to have a godly relationship. We should invite the presence of God. God should be the center of that relationship. That is only when we can have a godly relationship. And what are some things that we can do to build up a godly relationship? You are in a friendship, you are you have a business partner, you are engaged, you are married. These are some things we can do. You pray for one another, pray for each other. Talk together about God. Study the Bible together. Go on evangelism together. Preach the word of God. Why so many people today, they fall into sin easily? Because that nobody knows that they are Christians. In the environment they are in, they don't preach. If you are preaching the environment you have, in case the devil wants to tempt you, the Spirit of God will remind you, look, oh, these people are watching you. You are the one preaching to them. Don't do that to them. You'll be able to control yourself. But most of us, we don't identify, nobody knows whether we are Christian or whatever we have. We are just there. You know, we flow along with the crowd. If the sinner comes, we, we blend with the sinner. If the hypocrite comes, we blend with the hypocrite. If the slider comes, we blend with them. If the idol worshiper comes, we blend with them. But it helps not to be so. So to be able to build a godly relationship, God must be the center of that relationship. 
And other things we should do is pray for each other. Talk about God together. Study the Bible together. Worship together. Be careful with physical affection. Yes. That is why some churches, they say when brothers and sisters are engaged, in fact, in some churches, they cancel it completely. The sister should not go to the brother's house on pay. Or if she's going, she go with a fellow sister. If the brother is going to the sister's house, he goes with a fellow brother. So that they will not be tempted. You know, he says, be careful with physical affection. Look at what Joseph did when Potiphar's wife wanted to tempt him. Joseph ran for, for his life. The Bible says, flee all appearances of sin. Joseph ran and he left his chest. And that was what Potiphar's wife used and lied with. But at the end, everything worked out to the glory of God and to the promotion of uh, Joseph. From prison, he became a prime minister. So, reflect God's character to one another. In your relationship, is it the business one? Is it the friendship? Is it engagement? Is it marriage? Reflect God's character. And what shows God's character? The fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit should be reflected in all godly relationship. According to Galatians, we can see the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5.22. It talks about love. If you love somebody, you will not cheat on the person. You will not lie against the person. You know, and so on. Then joy is one of them. The joy of the Lord is our strength, peace, forbearance has to do with temperance, long suffering, to be able to tolerate kindness, be kind, be good, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. Some people, their own type of love is to be receiving. You have a friend, maybe you are just casual friends, but you don't give your own, you want that person to be giving to you. And you have, it's not that you are poor, it's not that you don't have, you don't have, you don't have, you know, such a person that is, that doesn't do, cannot have friends, cannot keep friends. But you like people to be giving to you, but you don't want to do it. It is not, that means the person doesn't have the fruit of the spirit. Then let's look at several signs of a healthy and godly relationship. They should be trust for each other. You should be able to trust one another. To be able to support each other, as I said earlier, you know, there are some couples that are even married, even those that are engaged. Those that are engaged here, you know, you should be careful. You are engaged to a partner, and then uh, when you see that if you are progressing, the person is not rejoicing, please cut it off. The person will not help you. By the time you get married, then that person will not support you. There are some spouses, they don't want their, their spouse, their fellow spouse to, to go above them. It just feel like some men, you say, ah, you are a woman now. Huh? Why, why are you, you have gotten a messy. What do you mean with PhD? Uh, you are a woman now. Huh? Uh, you should stay at home and take care of the children. It is good if he's ready to take care of you. But you should have a, a business you are doing. In case of anything, you should have your own source of income. If he wants you to stay at home, there should be something outside you are selling or a business online that you are doing. Don't just stay like that. When you want to, you buy your own things, you will be asking for money. When you want to buy bride, we're asking for money, it is not done. Yes, he has said you shouldn't work. Okay, he's giving you pocket money, it's okay. But you can do online business that will not tell you, you can do at home. You know, you order for you, you sell online. And people order for it and you give it to a dispatch rider to deliver it. You know, you should have a source of income. You don't know what might happen tomorrow. When it's no longer there, you should be able to sustain yourself and your children so please the next slide then also another sign of a healthy and godly relationship you are equal partners husbands should realize that they are wives they are not slaves it is true the bible say help mates that means help mates god took him from the side god took us women from the rib of the man and then made the woman so help me she should be by your side you know, and also a woman should not look down on the husband if you, if you are any more than him. Not because of that disrespect him. It is all there in the Bible. Then also, we should be ourselves, especially for those that are engaged. Please do not pretend. If that person is for you, the relationship will continue. If that person is not for you, let him or her go. Don't pretend. Be yourself. If the person loves you, the person will be able to tolerate you and continue with you. 
if the person is, is, it doesn't love you, then let the person go. God will bring the right person. So be yourself in whatever relationship you find yourself. Do not uh, pretend, especially the relationships that will lead to marriage or those that are engaged. Communicate well and honestly, honestly with each other. Do not lie. Communicate well and honestly with each other. Do not lie. Respect each other. Yes, some men they talk down on their wives, even in the presence of other people outside. You know, some can even slap their wife in the presence of other people. Some women they insult their husbands. It is not done. It is not the right thing. Respect each other, whether within the house or outside. They now come together. For example, sports, picnic, healthy games. Then when we say home, you do not need premarital sex for the singles or sex with someone that is not your spouse for those that are married. Have fun together, play together, be like brothers and sisters for those that are married. You know, let your spouse be your best friend. So please, next slide. Then, in conclusion, in whatever relationship you find yourself, whether business, friendship, or marriage, put God first. That is number one. In business, before you even go into business partnership with anybody, pray, ask God. Because if the person you are doing business with is not God fearing, the person is going to exploit you, the person is going to cheat on you, the person might even end up running away with the fund that you use in starting the business. So, you must pray and ask God, should I go into a business partnership or relationship with that particular person? Also, friendship. Make God the center of it. How you marry, put God first, be sincere and be trustworthy. Do to others what you want them to do to you. Luke 6, 31. We've seen that before. Then, we round up with this Bible verse. If you have your Bible there or your answer, you can open it up. Tell Corinthians 6, 17 to 18. It said, Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, fear the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, I will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, fear the Lord Almighty. So the Lord is telling us we should come out. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. That is it. No matter what is happening in the world, it should not affect us, we should not uh, be part of it. We should not say, oh, people are going, everybody has gone into sin. It is not true. That was what Elijah said. And God told Elijah, who told you? I have 70,000 that have not bowed their knee to bath. And Elijah was surprised. So also in these last days, there are people that are living in righteousness and holiness. And so we should join those groups. We should not say, oh, the other person is doing it. Pastors are even doing it. Pastors' wife, they are doing it. So who am I not to do? I'm just a member. And just a worker in the church. No, 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 no. And in that day, it is not being a pastor or pastor's wife that will make somebody to enter it. It is salvation and holiness, walking in righteousness with God. So God is telling us, come out from among them. We should not imitate the way the world they do their relationship. We should be separate. We should uh, relate with one another according to the Bible ways. Yes, please. Next slide. Thank you, and then God bless. I don't know if we have any question. It's question time. Yes, Rachi, go back to you, please. Okay, thank you very much, Doctor of Omosusi. We really thank you for taking us through this um, wonderful topic. And um, by God's grace, you have done justice to this. It's time for us to ask Dr. Omosusi questions, or probably you have any form of contribution. The time is open, but I will prefer the questions first, so that Dr. Omosusi would note them down and tackle them. So please, the floor is open for questioning. Why Dr. Omosusi will pen them down and answer them? If you have a question, just raise your hand up with the. Um, uh, palm icon, raise it up, then we will identify you, you ask the question, and Dr. Moses will take it down and answer. The floor is open now. Okay. 
Okay, um, Dr. Moses, I have a question and um, it relates to this topic and I thank you very much because you touched um, you touched on it and you equally have done justice to it but I just need an elaboration on that particular part. It's concerning the LGBTQ plus society that um, the whole world is pushing due to moral decency. Um, Dr. Mosusi, just this week that we are in, the head of the Catholic Church made, uh, uh, um, made a kind of comment concerning them that they are to be blessed that the LGBT people are to be accepted into the church now. I know very much you're not a theologian, and um, in as much as um, it may look as a theological issue, but um, through the social aspect, how do we treat such people in our society? Because we're talking about relationship in a decaying world. How do we treat such people when eventually you have um, an office mate that is a gay. Um, not necessarily that the person is making advances to you, to, 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 to you. Not necessarily the person is making advances to you that, okay, I, I want to, you know, I want us to hang out as a man. But I'm talking in the aspect of this person is a gay. For me, uh, naturally, I don't know. Naturally, when you know somebody is, is an robber and the person is close to you, you may not embrace the person naturally you may, uh, let me use the word the way Christ is you may not impress that person oh you are an Arab you are my friend I know you are studying you are my friend you may not do that now talk more of these LGBT people you just come to the office you, you see your fellow guy or a fellow lady if it's a guy not dressed up like a lady with lipstick making advances towards you or you know this person is a guy or the person is not even making any advances towards you or you just come to the church and they say so 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 person is going to wed and uh, his brother this and brother this how do we treat such people do we treat them as if they have um, uh, hiv you should be run away from there Worker like our professionality, we do not criticize people, we accept everyone, no matter who you are, from the social aspect. As a social worker, we are meant to accept all types of clients, different types of population, different types of social orientation. So the presentation I gave earlier on was based on Christian background. Uh, I hope you understand what I mean. Okay. From the social aspect, like even Jesus, why was there on this? He did not condemn anyone. Even when there was a woman that uh, you know they drove down to where Jesus was, they chased her down to where Jesus was, and they wanted to stone him. That her master, she was found in the very heart. In adultery, she was committing adultery with water right hand there. And Jesus wrote that and did not respond. Then later they said, Master, what do you have to say? And he raised up his head. Now, what did he tell them? He said, Is there anyone among you that does not have a sin, that, that has not committed sin, should cast the first two? And what is this? Oh, that they are all sinners. It's just because they know the fault in the very heart. They dropped their stones and they left. And when Jesus rose, uh, raised up his head again, he asked the woman, where are those that condemned you? And the woman said, they were all gone. And Jesus said, go and see no more. So, from the social aspect and as Christians, because I've seen on YouTube and I've read and I've uh, listened to videos about so many of them, you know, that we are formerly lesbian, gay, or transgender, or bisexual. That later realized that they are in the wrong path and they repented, they gave their life to Christ, and they must have this. 
everybody interceding for them. So what you do? If you have this don't force you. All these lesbian gay and you know they don't force you. They know that you are not a lesbian and not a gay or gay. This is to watch you from what I've read. It's only those they know that are lesbian and men that will make advances towards or that are gay. So if you have a colleague like that, the only thing you should be doing is to pray for such a girl. And if you have opportunity, maybe you are very the person just like you naturally, not that the person is being attracted to you. You can take that time, you know, share some videos of those people that were formerly lesbian and gay and now they repented and gave their life to Christ and they are now straight. You share those videos, send it to the person's WhatsApp. Because there are some of them you might not have, they might not even sit down for you to preach Jesus to them. Or for you to tell them that, oh, you know, you don't need to condemn them and tell them that this thing you are doing is wrong, you are going to air fire. You might not be able to win that soul. So what you do is to show them love. Don't be close to them, but don't let them influence you. But there is a way you can show to someone that, you know, that will show, that you can be to the person that will show to the person that, ah, I love you, but it is what you are practicing that I hate. I hope you are getting me. So please don't go. Yes. Uh -huh. Don't criticize them. Prayer is the weapon. The one I, I watched on YouTube. Very young age. And then there was, I think, one of the siblings was always condemning her. You are going to hell because she was from a Christian background. She, saw, she just said as she was growing up, she hated being a female. You know? You know, oh no, sorry, I think I'm talking about her. Uh, she was a female, but she was she started behaving like a male. I don't know what they call those ones. <laughs> she was a female, but now she just wanted to be a male. She didn't want to be is it transgender or whatever. She didn't want to be a female again. She was dressing like a male, doing everything that male people they normally do. And so some of the siblings, you know, even the parents. She said there was one of her auntie that showed that love. In fact, during celebration period, she will not go, she will go to that her auntie's place. And when she gets there, her auntie will entertain her. She won't even talk to her. But she was praying for her in secret. She said there was one day she hated herself. She just fell down and started crying. Nobody preached to her. That auntie did not even preach to her. She was just alone. She said, What is wrong? She now came back to her senses. What is wrong? The family feel it. Why are you doing like a new? She started crying alone. That's condition of the Holy Spirit. It was later that the auntie told her that, ah, that she has been interceding for her. And this same auntie was showing her love. She will call her while she's in school. Hope you are okay, you know, that the parents and the siblings, they were criticizing her. You are going to hell. Why would you be a female? You want to change over to a male. What is wrong with you? You are possessed. But this auntie showed her love and was praying in secret for her. And that was how she repented. Her video is everywhere on YouTube. You know, she's now talking, saying that um, this thing that has to do with transgender is not just physical, there's a spirit behind it. You know? So, what we do is that we show them love and we pray for them. Prayer is the key. I hope I've answered your question. Thank you very much, Dr. Moses. You've done very well here. Okay. Pastor Jeffrey, your question, sir. Yes, I want to first of all appreciate um, Doctor for this wonderful presentation. Uh, I want to thank you for this program. Uh, I want to ask in regards to the aspect of you say worship together. Um, you know, there is some relationship where we have um, some couples who are already who got married before. They had to discuss the issue of um, worship, you know. I'm trying to talk about the aspect of, you know, striking the balance of marrying outside the faith or within the faith. You know, at what point should uh, intended couples or already couples should discuss about this matter? What are the likely, you know, uh, merit and the demerit of uh, getting married within the faith or outside the faith? You know, I'm gonna talk about what are the dangers if one marries somebody who is not sharing the same uh, worship persuasion, spiritual persuasion, or religious persuasion. 
what are the likely dangers or what should people get married to people that are not of the same you know religious background you know uh, just speak on that as regards this maintaining a godly relationship in this particular period of time uh, understand it fully well that we also live in a secularized society where people are even going outside the faith right now and uh, not even thinking about even having God in their life. They feel God is just uh, uh, an entity that, uh, that is conceived by philosophers or what have you. So just I want to just talk more about that. Okay, th- thank you very much. Um, like, I think it is best. For example, every church has their own different That says, can two work together? I said they agree. It is then divided. So, what I believe is that it is good for you during that period of engagement. Discuss it with your wife or your husband to be. Okay, I worship on Saturday, you worship on Sunday. I've seen ladies that worship on Sunday that got married to Adventists and then they started, they went to their husband's. Uh, that's the normal thing. You know, the woman will follow the husband to the husband's church. Are you getting it? So if you are the man and you know your worship day or your doctrinal belief is different from that of the sister, you need to discuss it. So that if the sister is not agreeing, she might say, Ah no, you need to follow me to my church. There's no way I can worship on Saturday. There is a problem when you are married. So the best thing is to cut off that relationship. Except you are ready to go with her. which is not ready to go with you. So I said, okay, I love you. I don't want us to separate. Let me go with you. We are all serving God. Are you getting it? There are some instances whereby, where I know this is a Christian background now. It's a Christian program. We have some Christians marry Muslims. I've seen it so common in the West too. When engaged, two should be going to church, three should go to a mosque. Yeah, that way, especially among the Yoga Muslims. But what I want to say, all these things can be settled during engagement. If it is better to go your different ways. Broken uh, engagement is better than broken marriage. I hope you understand what I mean. Because uh, these are little, little things. The Bible says little forces that spoil the divine. So those little things, it might be so uh, little. You might see that it's not a, it's something not serious, but we can settle it when we are married. No, it is a very serious thing. It might be little, but it can break up the marriage. If it is not settled while you are in friend, engaged. I've been able to answer your question. Yeah, thank, all, thank you very you. much, Mal. Now, you have answered one part, which is for more like okay. the singles. Now, what about those who are already married or who are already in this quagmire? How should they find their way out? What, what is the best advice? How, so, like, I've, I met a couple, or I met a, a, yeah, a couple, but mostly the wife at uh, Worry, you know, uh, one of the missions we went to. Uh, she she had an agreement with the man. He, the man was not an Adventist, uh, but he she loved the man. The man claimed that he too loved her. That once they get married, there will not be problem. She can go to her church, no problem. She accepted. In fact, they even signed the contract. They signed the document that it will not be an issue. They had a document for it. But when they entered the, the marriage, first year there wasn't an issue. Second year, the first week came. Third year, the second baby came. At the point, the man just threw one money and told the woman, Hey, woman, I'm the man of this house, so don't step out of this house to any church again. Um, from today, you are banned. And so, one moment, when we came to that environment, we were having that program. The woman was lamenting. In fact, it became an issue that both families came together to want to resolve it. Everybody speaking is speaking on the side of the man, that the man is the head of the home, that the woman should succumb to what he is saying. And that she should not have her own way, but yet she is not comfortable with such kind of judgment. Sometimes she has to escape from the house or Sabbath days and go to go to the church because initially she was taking her children. But when the man banned her, 
she had a little bit of constraint of taking the children to to church so it became a serious issue for her even whilst we were there so for those already in this situation what is the best thing for them to do thank you ma'am for example like I mean, the example you just cited find that it was actually as a man you are the head of the room but then i think it was love that was shocking him sorry to use that word mm. you know and yeah Sorry, you are breaking that contract. A contract is a contract. They even have the written contract and it's signed. Yes, yes. You can become a pastor. Are you getting it? And as a pastor, you cannot be going to your church and your wife will be going to another one. It's not done. Because the man they are going to ask you. The man was just looking at the present. So that was why I agreed and he signed that contract with the wife. That's why you didn't continue. Don't be on. Taking out the present and then he signed that contract. Yeah, and the one we have to submit. Except she wants to leave that marriage, which is not by Peter. That is what I have to say. She has to submit, like what every other person is saying. I said she wants to take her husband to court because they signed a contract. So women can definitely do that. I said they agree though. They signed a contract though. So that is why I want and present that in court. And you know what the judge will say? The judge will tell you, man, you sign, this is your signature. So allow this woman to go to her. Train engagement, we should not allow love to blind us. We should face reality. Are you getting me? You looked up our days, face reality. Look at the future, look at the five years ahead, ten years ahead. What will happen? We are agreeing to something now. What if you become a pastor? Will it be nice for you to be in your own church and your wife in another one? But well, that was what that man, that brother, did not think of. Okay? Thank you very much, Dr. Thomas Suzy. Um, at this point in time, um, it's already seven of for contribution or for questioning, and I use this time to remind you of the ministry that has brought this to you, which is Leaf of Autumn Ministry. Um, if you are just joining us, this program is brought to you by Leaves of Autumn Ministry, which of course is a basically online ministry. It's basically an online ministry where um, sharing of tracks and um, sharing of tracks and digital ministry is done. We have um, audio presentation, WhatsApp presentation, we even use um, Google Meet like the one we are using today, and various ways. We have our YouTube channel, Facebook channel, even we are there right on Instagram and other social media. Just join us, you'll be receiving um, you know, our weekly post. And I would like to tell you that our director is here. Our director is here, he's the one that gave the last contribution of the question, which is um, Pastor Jeffrey Evo Meme, and he's actually going to do the vote of thanks immediately and done speaking about this group. Our group, we have a vision, and the vision is to see that thousands of people, and that thousands of souls, are won in these last days. And um, we are targeting the wealthy the well-educated and the worldly. We call it the three W's of loan ministry. Our target is towards the wealthy, the worldly, and the well-educated. Now, why do we choose these three, three um, dimensions? Is because sometimes we think that the gospel is actually for the poor. 
just like um, a religious scholar defined religion as the opium of the masses. And sometimes people think that um, so there are people that have already gone astray that they cannot be saved, just like I asked the question about the LGBT. And Dr. Mosusi gave us a, a, a practical example about the lady she watched online on YouTube. And the other one is well educated. Sometimes you just feel that there are these people that know too much. They are ready, they know it, so they, they don't need to hear it again. That's, our mission is to reach these three people, the wealthy, the worldly, and the well-educated, and make sure that we present them with the truth of this last day, which is, of course, to, for them to get ready to meet Jesus when he comes. We have a goal. Our goal is to give everybody both hard copy and soft copies of literature at this end time, so that our hard copies and our hard, uh, soft copies, we want to give it out to people, turning the hard ones to soft copy, turning the soft copy maybe to audio so that people can plug in because we notice now that everybody is online and we have our aims and objectives which i don't want to you know bore us with that like i said earlier on if you want to join this group please just contact the two contacts under the flyer sent with dr thomas Susie picture on it so last week last week ago we had a, a topic and we had a wonderful um, lawyer all the way from um, Bangkok University, that's the school of um, the school of um, law. He actually came down. She actually came down online to speak with us concerning sexual behavior and relations. So we have a lot of things we interact together. We learn from professionals, the teachers, because we don't want to claim that we know. And today we have learned a lot of things from Doctor. Almost easy. So this group loan is actually an end time ministry that will help your life in any way. I am not campaigning for you to join, but I tell you it's worth it. You taking your data out for one hour, two hours, listening to our literatures, audio literature, listening to talks like this, it helps. It helps we release Wednesday program for you to listen online, watch online. In case you're unable to get to church, you can just watch or listen while driving down home from work. So this ministry is the one that brought this wonderful topic to you for our interaction. And we thank Dr. Mosusi for doing that. This time around, I will leave the room open for our director, the person of Pastor Jeffrey, to give the vote of thanks. And at the same time, I see Pastor Edo Emmanuel, Pastor Edo Emmanuel, I don't know if he's still online, or if he's not online, I would like to call somebody abstracts. I can see my sister Mary. Um, sister Mary, when Pastor Jeffrey is done with the vote of thanks, Sister Mary can give us the closing prayer. Pastor Jeffrey, you have the floor now. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Pastor Jigozi for taking the lead. Uh, yeah, we we are benefiting from this program because your department in this ministry is uh, up and doing, bringing up this program for us. You know, um, I'm sure Dr. Thomasusi has never spoken to me directly online, uh, but you have been in contact with her. First, I want to appreciate you, Pastor Chi. Uh, despite the fact that you are not currently close to uh, the house right now, but you are far away, still doing this work, we really want to appreciate you. God will bless you. And I uh, want to really thank God for uh, Dr. Messi for you know taking her time to you know put this slide together, put up her thoughts, you know, and she was here even before most of us came in. I uh, really want to appreciate you, Ma, for the sacrifice. Uh, we are not ungrateful. We are not ungrateful for this um, rare privilege. We want to thank you. We are not many, but you still decided to still come and share your weight of knowledge because the Lord will bless you especially. And I want to thank everyone online. Uh, so, um, whether it's a topic professor, a debate, or Larry Wadju, I don't really know, but I really want to appreciate you for being here. Uh, Elder Franklin. I really appreciate you. you have been so supportive all the while. Um, it's one of the board members for our life in Nigeria. I really thank you for being here. The Lord bless you. 
I want to thank God for Brother William Shea. I'm from correct and then uh, thank God for um, that sister of Brother Sister Damilola Ido. You know, I want to thank God for everyone here, Brother Jimmo uh, Samuel, one of my students who is now a graduate. I thank you for being here. Uh, Sister Mary, I so appreciate you. You have always been so supportive. The Lord bless you. Uh, all the way from Babcock. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm sure what I say, Sister, Sister e e Kele, uh, the Lord bless you. We really appreciate you for taking your time. Brother Abraham, Pius, I can say, Pastor, you have been doing so well. You are very uh, very active when it comes to anything ministry. Uh, we appreciate you. Our four others are we're here. Pastor Dudu, he left just a few whether it's in this talk, I don't know, but it was here initially with us. I appreciate you. And some others also came and they have left. We thank you all. Um, thank you for taking out your time and your data to benefit from this. But I pray that the blessing of the Lord will be permanent in our lives. And the lessons we have learned this evening will not throw them away. They will go a long way in aiding our relationship with God and in helping us to build a long-lasting relationship. Our interest is not so much in doing activities, but we want to see that it has been effective in the lives of people. Who can I? I I'm sorry to say this, uh, uh, that Franklin is here. A life Nigeria. I got to know them 2011. They have been so instrumental in my own personal spiritual growth, you know. And I'm sure as we benefit from one message or the other, you know, we are sharpening ours. So I hold so much of my procedure to our life Nigeria. The members there, the the board members, several members, several uh, of the members of the ministry have been a blessing, sort of blessing to me particularly. So I'm sure as we are also doing this together, collaborating, we are also pushing the work of the gospel to Christ's return, and mostly to hasten the coming of Christ. Without much ado, uh, Pastor Chi mentioned of joining the ministry is open for you collaborating with us, either in this, uh, even with moral support, financial support. You know, even if it is uh, collaborating together in doing ministry, if you have a, if you are an independent minister, an evangelist, you wish to share trust, we can supply you trust, you know, and you'll be able to distribute. If you are doing evangelism, we need trust, we can do well to supply you. Sometimes we have hard copy books that we distribute controversy, Step to Christ, you know, um, a trip to Supernatural, several other books that we, 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 we distribute. 